it's a great honor to have you once again for our lesson discussion. Today, my name is Rose Babidi from Bunga Central Church, and I am with Jemima Simba from Bunga, Bunga Central. Central Church. You're welcome, Jemima. Thank you. Um, today, we, before we start our lesson discussion, let's invite God to be with us. Okay. Heavenly Father, I give you the glory, bless your name. Thank you so much for the great opportunity that you always offer to us to study about you, Heavenly Lord. As we study your word, you're the inspirer of the writers. May you inspire us to learn of you and go deeper into the knowledge for your love, for your kindness and grace. Father, keep away the hand of the evil one that we may learn in peace. And above all, Father, we pray that you may draw closer to you more than ever. It's my humble prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Cast the day is the title of our lesson today. And like we all know we, we studying the book of Job. Oh, sure. And we've, we've looked at different subtopics in, in, the, in the book and we believe that God has been blessing us. And in my prayer today that he continues to bless, bless us. us. Last week we dealt with human, God and human suffering. And from there we're able to see how God, how Job dealt with the suffering that he mm. was going through. And today, once again, we go deeper into how Job dealt with his suffering. And from there, the lesson writer tells us that we'll be looking at Job's sentiments mm. towards his suffering. Because from, 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 from the lesson, we see that God suffered so much, rather Job suffered so much that he curses the day he was born. Mm. He looks at the futility of, of life and he mm. even reaches the extent of wanting to die. He ponders about death and he says he wishes he dies. That is how much Job suffered. Mm. As we read the story of Job, of Job, we have two distinct advantages. First, we know how, how it how ends. It end. And second, we know no, the, background. the background. Basically, we know the operating scene. We know that the devil comes, he meets God and talks about Job. And God asks him, have you seen my faithful man down on earth? Mm. And yes, we know that at the end of the, the story, God comes through and helps Job and, and Job. restores everything that, that Job lost. lost. But poor Job he didn't know it, anything. No. While he suffers so much, he loses his children, he loses his donkeys, he loses his wealth, he loses everything. And the suffering comes to his skin. Job knows nothing mm. that is going on. Mm. From the Bible, we know that Job was a faithful man. He was a good man. But still, he, he, he suffers, he goes through what we, can, we cannot comprehend, mm. what is too much. For and him. today... The lesson writer brings us Cast the Day as our title for the lesson. Our memory text is coming from the book of Revelation. Mm. And it reads, You are worth, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Before we can say anything and go deeper into today's lesson, there's one thing that is for sure, that God is worth of our, of mm. our, our, our praises. Because he is powerful, he deserves the honor, he created everything and everything exists because, because of him. Of him. Um, the lesson writer urges us to try to put ourselves in Job's position. Mm. But can we? We may not be able to. We may not be able to. Mm. He wants us to try so much to put ourselves into his position so that we will understand the confusion, the, the anger, anger, and the, the sorrow. sorrow that he was going through. But he still goes ahead and tells us we may not be able to put up ourselves in, in Job's position, mm. but haven't we suffered? Mm. Haven't we had a moment where we feel like we cursed the day that we were born? Haven't we gone through situations? Haven't we seen things happening to our loved ones, to our neighbors, to ourselves? And we feel like we, we, come, to a, we come to, to a position where we ask ourselves, why was I born? Why that day? 
as god as as job goes ahead to lament his birth as as he goes ahead to direct towards to direct his sentiments towards god about his suffering the lesson writer brings to his title let that day perish mm. job remembers and and looks at the day he was born and he says he wishes that, that day never existed true. the lesson writer brings us an atheist after an accident happens and children die mm. one conclusion that he was able to make what do you expect to happen in this meaningful world where there's no purpose there's no direction a mm. tragic like that has no meaning because the world itself has no meaning it has no meaning the lesson writer says that for Christians that's not the answer that we ought to give mm. I want us to read in Job 3, 3, 1 up to 10. It's quite long, but let's see how, how much we can read. At last, Job spoke, and he cast the door of his birth. Mm. He said, Let the day of my birth be erased, mm. and the night I was conceived. Let the day be turned to darkness. Let it be lost even to God on high, and let no light shine on it. Let the darkness and utter gloom claim the day for its own. Let a black cloud of shadow, let a black cloud overshadow it, and let the darkness terrify it. Let the night be bottled, blotted off the calendar, never again to be counted among the days of the year, never again to appear among the months. Let the night be childless, Let it have no joy. Let those who are experts at cursing, whose cursing could rouse levier <clears throat> than curse that day. Let its morning star remain dark. Let it hope for light, but in vain. Mm. May it never see the morning light. Curse the day for fading to shut my mother's womb, for letting me be born to see all this trouble. Thank you, Jamie. From the Bible, we know that life is a gift mm. and we exist only because God, God created us. But, Jamie, what about those days when we cannot explain what we are going through? It just becomes too much. What about those days when we feel we cannot go on? What about those days when you feel so overwhelmed to mm. understand and to take one step ahead? That is what Job was talking about. As a matter of fact, we see that from all those verses, 1 to 10 2 to 10 job laments mm. he 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 talks about the day and he wishes that day never existed does it happen to us mm. as a christian because for the atheists they will conclude there's no meaning in this world right. as a christians have you felt the anger the sorrow the confusion the and most of all the inability to explain what's going on Like we learned from last lesson, we know that God wrote the book, inspired the writer of the, the book of Job for a reason, mm. to show us that suffering is going to be part of his life. But there's hope in suffering because we know that there is life. he is That's there. Suffering. He knows it all. He's in control. So no matter what happens, our God is in control. Mm. Jemima, um, anything about let the day perish? The lesson writer says, who though in moments of despair hasn't wondered if life were, was Once, worth it. Yeah. We are not talking about the unfortunate cases of suicide. Rather, what about the times when like Job we might have wished that we hadn't been born to, At all. to begin with? Have you seen how many people commit suicide every day? Um, I think it's something uh, that may be will still be ref uh, reflected in the next lessons. Mm. The, the difference when there is life and when there is no life, mm. when things are going well and when things are not going well, is we tend to have an easy time believing God when oh, yeah? the ride is smooth. When the ride gets tough, it becomes quite hard. And at times, it seems to lose meaning. Mm. 
And at times we wonder, well, of what value is it that God is there, mm. that God has created this world, that God has created me, that he loves me. How can he love me? And many times I try my best to put myself in Job's feet, especially when my faith is being uh, put to the test by what is happening to me. Many of those times I'm like, is it really worth it to stand? Mm. And many times it feels like it's almost too much to do anything anymore, to pray, to believe, you know. But the assurance is that whatever it is, however hard life may be, it is always a gift from God. Mm. And it is not us to determine, to call upon death, to determine our, our, our time to get out of this world. It is for God. And once we know that, the rest of it is okay. Mm. Down here it says, have you ever felt the way Job felt? That is, wishing you had never been born. Eventually, though, what happened? Of course, you felt better. How important is it for us to remember that even in our worst moment, we have the hope, the prospect of things improving? I want to believe the issue is just the way it is highlighted. The book of Job being written at the beginning of it all. Mm. There is a reason that we, we will always keep <clears throat> looking back to it. That at the end of the day when we feel that life is just too much for us, mm. we can't bear anymore, we have a reason to push. We look up and we remember Job and we always have a reason to push on. Thank you, Jemima. Job goes ahead in his confusion, in his mm. anger and his sorrow. He longs for death. He wishes he could rest in the grave. Mm. Jemima, tell us about how Job longs to die. Mm. As we were, as we are saying, mm. you know we cannot live, we cannot fully understand Job's situation. Mm. We can only imagine the sorrow. <clears throat> Maybe in this life, for the mothers, for the people that have had kid, uh, kids, for the parents, anything else can be lost. Anything else in this world can be lost, but you retain your kids. Mm -hmm. Now, so, uh, uh, Job loses his children. <coughs> he loses his wealth. And then now sorrow besets on him. More sorrow besets on him. He falls sick. And yet amid this, this all, he never curses God. Mm. But the issue is, we who are now reading about it, we know where the whole thing starts from. Mm. We know the background and we know where the whole thing starts from. Mm. And as you had said, we know where the story ends from. But the guy does not know anything happening to him. I mean, Job has no idea that because of his faithfulness towards God, because of his <coughs> walk with God, he is being put Tested. to the test. Mm. And um, Job says, I wish I was born Busted. dead. Mm. I wish that my mother never breastfed me for me not to grow. He says a lot of things about dying. And you, you, feel, you feel the depth of his sorrow in his words, you know? But what does he say about death? Even at the point when he feels like dying, what does he say about it? What does he say about God? Mm. He says, I would, for now, I would have lain still and been quiet. I would have been asleep. Then I would have been at rest. What do we notice? There is nothing like, God is useless to me. Mm. There is no reason for me to trust him. Uh, there is this and that. Many times when we, we are faced with just a little what Job faced, mm. we are like, God is useless to me. I mean, if he cannot help me, then he's as good as not being there. Job suffered to the very, very last. Mm -hmm. And yet never in that one day did he ever <coughs> denounce God. Ecclesiastes 9.5. Uh, five, nine, five. Mm. Ecclesiastes 9.5. Mm. For the living know that they shall die. Mm -hmm. But the dead know not anything. Mm. Neither have they any more a reward for the memory of them 
is forgotten. Okay. I want to believe we, we, the reason why Job wanted to die. Mm. He felt when he dies, everything will come to a rest. Mm. He will escape the sorrow. He will escape all the, the, the suffering. He says um, life is meaningless. And so maybe at death, there is nothing to feel. There is nothing to suffer. All is gone. But then the question is, when life becomes better, do we still have the same thought? Mm. <coughs> we are very funny as humans because one time we are longing for death and another time we are saying life is so short. Mm. Meaning we do not want to die however hard life is, however much we say we want to die. If we wanted to die, then a person committing suicide wouldn't struggle. Mm -hmm. But you know what's funny? Someone chooses to take, to take his life. He actually decides to take his life. But he struggles while he's dying. Now, at this point, we can all understand all Job wanted was to get out of this life. Mm. Life had become so hard. Life had uh, lost its meaning. Mm. And uh, the only place that seemed to have peace was in the tomb. <coughs> it was so sad for him. Mm. But as Christians, we have a wonderful promise. You know? Mm. We have a promise that at the end of the day, when all of it is done, Christ will work in us and will create a new heart in us. And at the end of the day, he will work towards our winning and the God will surpass all the suffering, all the pain, and we all always come out winners. Mm. <coughs> At the same time, amid the, pre amid the present suffering, how can we learn to remember the good times we had in the past and draw comfort and solace from them? Mm. Many times when we are suffering, we forget everything good that has happened to us. And we say, it is useless. Mm. I mean, life is useless. <coughs> And we forget all the good things that God has done for us in the past. How I wish that we learn today to concentrate on the good that God has given us so that we can pick a lesson. Thank you, Jemima. Before we, we, we can leave that rest in the grave, there's one thing that I wanted to highlight, Jemima. That is about the state of the dead. Mm. So many times as we find ourselves in sorrowful situations, especially when we lose our loved ones, we've had our pastors, priests, and so many people use your soul rest in peace and you you you've got to conquer with me that if there's any <clears throat> generation that has been affected by the immortality of the soul the teaching of of the fact that the soul never dies it is in this generation mm -hmm. because it is taught from our priests from our leaders of, of different churches sure. but we believe as adventists from the bible that when the when someone dies they, they rest and, and from Job, we see that he highlights that. He shows that because he calls sleep, he Rest. calls death sleep. sleep. He actually, the, the, the lesson writer tells us that he understood that death is as unconscious sleep. Mm. When you die, you die. So many times we get encouragement that, hey, your daughter has died, your baby has died, your husband has died, he's They've with gone God. To a better, a better place. He's playing with the angels. <laughs> he's smiling with God. But I want to tell you that from the Bible, that teaching is wrong. Mm. When you die, you Father die. Abraham, Jacob, all of them are asleep and they are waiting for Jesus' second, second coming. coming. So the next time someone tells you, hey, they have gone to heaven, they have not gone to heaven. They the Bible slept. teaches they have slept mm. and we are waiting for Jesus Christ's coming. Other people's pain. Mm. So many times we've gone through pain. And someone comes to you and tells you, Jenny, I understand what you're going through. Mm. I can feel what you're going through. No one can ever understand, understand. the Our other person's okay. suffering. Mm. Yes, when we read about Job's cursing the day he was born, when we, we, we read about him longing for the day of death and looking forward to it, we can relate, we can identify with him so many times. But we can never be in the position to understand mm. what, he went, what he went through. And yes, Jemima, when you're going through a problem, I might be there and try to be compassionate. We know of the empathy, mm. like being compassionate. Jesus Christ tells us to be compassionate. In Matthew 
20 is it 25 when Jesus yes Matthew 25 Jesus urges us to go and help mm. feed the hungry clothe the naked visit the sick mm. visit the prisoners and all that and in James he tells us what is pure religion he says pure religion is to visit the fatherless and the widow True. and the widows basically to be compassionate <laughs> to feel other people's pain yes today's lesson writer is telling us that we can never be able to feel yeah, people's pain. Mm. We can never be able to understand. And, and, and there's one thing that he says, no matter how much suffering exists in the world, how thankful we can be that no one fallen human, fallen human suffers more than what one they individual can. can. Mm. There's one thing that is for sure. You may not be, understand, be, be able to understand what, what other people are going through. But God tells us, that he gives us what we can handle. Mm. He gives us the strength to go through. When Jesus when God puts you in that situation it might be very hard and I may never be able to understand. But God gives us the strength to handle. Shani. Other people's pain. I want to say mm. that when we go through life And uh, we seem to have gone through a harder patch than someone else. We tend to say, if I went through what I went through, then it will be easier for you to go through what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Many times uh, we seem to compare our pain. And so we say, considering what I am going through, you can really easily bear what you're going through. Mm -hmm. The issue is, you cannot. You cannot compare. The two are very different. I may have lost a child and you can't give birth. Mm. The two pains are very different. Very different. I may tell you you're better off at least you've, you've, you've seen your child. It's not the same. I mean, it's my child. I never had a, a, a thing in my brain to lose this child. And so at whatever point in life, at whatever point of suffering, it is not equated to anything. But the thing is, we can make our life worthwhile. However degenerated our life is, we, we can make it worthwhile mm. by reaching out to someone. Feel someone else's pain. Mm -hmm. When you feel someone else's pain and you, you reach out to them, then you're able to help and uh, make this person feel a little better. Yeah, actually, in Matthew 25, Jesus urges us as Christians to try to alleviate pain. Mm. We can never be able to take away death, to take away suffering, to take True. away any pain that is happening for, I mean, in our neighbor's lives, in our friends' lives, in our relatives' lives. Mm. But Jesus Christ tells us at least to try, mm. especially as Christians. The weaver's shuttle, Jimmy. We, we, we continue to see Job mm. uh, trying to seek rest and relief. But... It also helps us to drop back to the futility still of life. The, uh, the, the lesson tells us about people like uh, Methuselah, mm. who lived 180, <coughs> sorry, 782 mm -hmm. years. Wow. If it was today's world, we would have said that one was a vampire. Okay, because they are the only ones we've had in the movies who have lived longer than they, you know. But they actually say at 187, he had his firstborn. He had <laughs> his firstborn. I mean, it is just funny. I know. It's just funny. <laughs> These days by 30, if you're not yet married, there is a problem. Uh -huh. Yet, they tell you, even them, at the time of their death, they never felt they had had a full life. Yeah. They felt... Life was too short. Fast forward. Um, we will read uh, Psalms 39. Psalms 39. Verses 5. It says, You have made my life no longer no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, each of us is but a breath. 
we jump to verses 11. It says, when you discipline us for our sins, you consume like a moth. What is precious to us, each of us is but a breath. It shows us how short life is. Mm -hmm. It tells us basically, in a nutshell, our life is so small compared to, to God. Mm -hmm. Job has been suffering, suffering and suffering, and he has wished for death. But one moment he's lamenting mm. about <coughs> his suffering and he wishes he has never been born. And another he says his life goes quickly, so quickly before him. And he's saying basically life is hard, full of toil mm -hmm. and pain. And he says we live that life with all the pain and all the toil and then we die. And he seems not contented to die. Yet at one moment he has been questioning God why he was actually born. Mm. Now, sometimes the whole of this thing does not make sense to us. At times of pain and suffering, there are so many things that don't seem to make sense. And sometimes we are like, the only thing that we hope is for us to die so that we move because we see no hope at all. Mm. But even Job that knew better, even him that had all the faith, that never denounced God, at the time of his deepest pain, he cried out in despair. Mm. <coughs> so the question is, then what is in it for us? The thing is, at whatever point in life, at whatever moment of suffering, whatever bad may have happened to us, our hope has to remain. We still keep the burning hope that after it all, God is going to restore us and that he will renew us in more and more strength. Thank you, Jemima. If there's any question that has, has battled people's minds, that has made scientists, I mean, spend sleepless nights mm. and read so many books, it is about life. Mm. What is man? What is life? Job, chapter 7, if you read from verses 17 through to 21, we see that Job kind of questions. He wants to understand what is what man is? that God magnifies him. He says, why does he preserve him? Mm. And why does God set his heart upon man? We know that so many times as we go through suffering and, and so many situations that we can never be able to understand. Mm. We have come to a situation when we ask ourselves, who are we? Why are we Do here? We even matter? Do we even mm. matter? Do we even matter? Why live? Like Job said, why keep me alive? Just kill mm. me and destroy me. I'm sure that in your life, in your work with, Christian, with, with Jesus, you have asked yourself such questions. But it, we are so lucky as Christians because we have the Bible mm. and we have the faith in God. What about the people that do not do believe? Not How do they answer the question, what is man? Why are we here? What is the purpose for us to live? But I want to tell you, dear friend, dear viewer, that there's one thing that the lesson writer puts out so clearly. There is a reason as to why we live. Mm. And if there is anything purpose. that can confirm to us that there is value upon man, that is the cross. Yeah, true. You may not be able to understand so many things, why you live. You may be small, you may be young, you may be, I don't know. But there's one thing that is for sure, God places the highest value upon mm -hmm. a human being. Mm. John 3.16 For, God so, loved For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, son that whoever Believe. believes, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you have, God says that whoever believes for that, he sent his begotten, begotten son. son. Now, one writer has said, that even if it were just one soul on this earth, Jesus Christ would have come. Amen. That means as you stand in your suffering, as you stand in your confusion, as you stand in your anger, and I don't know what you're going through, Jesus Christ came for you. Not for the whole world. Consider yourself the only soul. And it doesn't matter how bad you are. I know. <laughs> Jesus came matter. to save us. Mm -hmm. Jemima, as well, we conclude. Yes. Mm. There is something here. 
in the midst of Job's suffering, mm. when he feels life has lost it all mm. and there is nothing seemingly good about life anymore, he wonders why God bothers to even bring him all the suffering. Mm. He looks at himself as a very small being in the whole universe and he wonders if God is so big, why look for Job? Why target Job? Why him? I mean, why are the suffering? What is God trying to get after? I mean, why is he after him, you know? But the thing is, God does not bring suffering to us. Mm. <clears throat> and the story of Job is supposed to be enough to show us exactly what happens. God does not bring us suffering. Mm. Satan goes to God and asks for Job. And God gives Job to Satan, knowing this is my person. But he wants to prove to Satan that you cannot win this battle. That this person has a free will to love me. And that is exactly what happens. Thank God that Job was able to stand. Mm. I wouldn't want to be in Job's shoes. I don't want to. Why? Because just imagine if Job had failed. I know. God would have failed. In this great controversy, <clears throat> Satan would have won. But the beauty of all this is God gave up Job having all the faith mm. that Job would come out a winner, that he would stand for God. Let me tell you, the reason why God gives up Job is mm. because he loves him back mm. and because he's sure of the promises he had given to Job and because he knows Job loves him, genuinely god loves us genuinely amen god does not bring the suffering that we get today mm -hmm. however he lets satan be because even satan up to now has a choice and so he lets satan try us and we make a free will to choose him over satan why because we are free beings and we choose to love god because we love god Thank it you, is Jamila. as simple as that. Thank you, Jamila. There's one thing I want to highlight before we close today's lesson. The lesson writer said that in the situation that Job was going through, mm. he directs his lament towards God. Sure. Like we learned last week, mm. and we have learned today, that no one can ever understand your suffering. Mm. No one can ever understand your pain for the marriage. Even your partner can, can never, never understand, understand what you feel. Never. For the mothers, even your mother, yes, we love our children. We cherish them. We cling to them so close. But there are moments when even the mother cannot understand. understand. But hey, this is what the lesson writer is telling us. That God entertains our bitterness. I entertains our lamenting. So in those moments when you feel alone, you feel lonely, you feel no one can understand you. Direct I have news for you. To God. Direct them to God. You are in the right place. When you go down and cry to God and tell him you cannot understand, it is confusing, it is too much to bear, you are in the right place. Amen. As we conclude, I just want to read something small. It says, what a value this places upon man. Oh, pardon me, let me read from uh, some, some, somewhere further. Ellen G. White says, Behold, what man of love the Father has bestowed upon, upon us, us, that we should be called the sons of God. God. What a value this places upon man. Through transgression, the sons of men became subjects of Satan. Through the infinite sacrifice of Christ and faith in his name, the, the sons, sons of, of Adam, Adam become, become the sons, sons of God. God. By assuming human nature, Christ elevates humanity. Amen. That is for sure. Whatever is going on, when Christ assumed our human nature, he elevates us Amen. to a higher rock. And that is the one that you should trust. Thank Amen. you very much for joining us today. Jamie, the closing prayer. Let's pray. Father, we talk about you now. Try and understand that the thing that happened to this world is because you so do not love us. Somebody it's not because you wish us back, but because Somebody walks a path alone, watching others Remind walk around and pass. Remind us of Somebody's in the street, street now. Somebody's in the street.
that if you have to place to, to go, somebody cries out, that you're doing a good work in that.